So for consolidated drained triaxial test, if you look at these two stages, for consolidated drained triaxial test, the first stage is still apply that all around pressure, sigma three. In a consolidated drain triaxial test, in stage one, you keep the drainage open. If you keep the drainage open, you allow the excess pore water pressure to dissipate, which means that you see the excess pore pressure is zero. And as water dissipates, what pore water pressure dissipates, soil is going to consolidate. That's consolidation. So that's what the first letter stands for. So consolidated. And you can measure the change in volume from the volume of water drained. So that's the first stage. The second stage of a CD triaxial test is to apply the deviator stress very slowly. And this time again, you keep the drainage open. If you keep the drainage open and allow the excess pore water pressure to dissipate, then the excess pore water pressure generated delta UD is zero. So this delta UD is basically that change of pore water pressure during stage two, when you apply the deviator stress and you apply it very slowly and keep all the drainage open, so it's going to be dissipated and this is drain the condition. So that's what the second letter stands for, why it's called a drained. It's because you keep the drainage open during basically this entire process, during the stage two as well. For the CD triaxial test, because you keep the drainage open, the pore pressure is completely dissipated. So the total stress in your specimen is the same as the effective stress in your specimen. So that excess pore water pressure U is zero. At failure, the total and effective axial stress, so if we write this axial stress as sigma one, it's the same as the effective axial stress, sigma one prime. And this is basically that sigma three prime plus delta sigma d. For failure, I'm going to use subscript F to indicate this is divitor stress at failure. So at failure, the total effective axial stress sigma one is the same as sigma one prime is basically sigma three plus divitor stress. And this sigma three is the same as sigma three prime. So that's a confining pressure. So this is uh, basically the consolidated drain triaxial test process. Again, keeping all the drainage open throughout the process and the total stress is the same as effective stress. And this slide shows the results you get from CD triaxial test. On the FN side, this is for loose sand and NC clay, normally consolidated clay. I'm showing two sets of figures here. The top one, this is Delta sigma D. Remember that's the divitor stress, basically the shear stress. And horizontal axis is the axial strain. So for loose sand, as you increase the axial strain, so you're loading the specimen by increasing the axial strain, the divitor stress is going to increase until the specimen fails. And we call that divitor stress at failure delta sigma DF. So that's for loose sand. The bottom plot here, this is uh, deformation, basically. So this is the change in volume. As you increase the axial strain, the sample is going to actually decrease in volume. So that's compression. So that's for loose sand or NC clay. For thin sand and OC clay, over consolidated clay, the behavior is quite different. So again, we are looking at stress strain behavior first. So that's a divitor stress versus axial strain. For dense sand and OC clay, you notice that the divitor stress increases to the peak value. And this is where we define as 
the defeater stress at failure. And then it followed by softening response. So it actually decreases after that. So that's the stress stream behavior for dense sand and OC clay. And in terms of the volume change, so this is volume change. So the specimen is going to decrease in volume. The volume decreases initially, but then eventually for dense sand and OC clay, the specimen is going to expand in volume. So this is what we call dilation. In something we actually covered uh, in part two when we talk about direct shear test. So you observe similar behavior for dense sand or OC clay during direct shear test. So the specimen is going to basically expand when you shear it. So that's called dilation. In, in terms of the failure plane, so this is again that CD triaxial test. I'm showing here sand and normally consolidated clay. On this plot, there are two more circles. So this is more circle. And each more circle corresponds to one soil specimen at failure. So this is more circle at failure for one soil specimen. So let's call this larger one specimen two. And this is a more circle for specimen one. And for these two specimen, when you share it to failure, you apply different confining stress. So that's why you got two different more circle. So for soil specimen one, for instance, this is the confining pressure, sigma three, and same as sigma three prime for CD test. For specimen two, this is basically sigma three for specimen two. And if you apply different confining pressure, soil is going to fail at different axial loading. So a sigma one is different for these two tests as well. So that's specimen one, and this is sigma one for specimen two. And for sand and NC clay, we know that C prime, that cohesion is approximately zero. Therefore, actually, you actually only need one, one more circle to find this failure envelope. So that's what's shown here. So this is that MC failure envelope. Since you only have essentially just one parameter, that phi prime, so you only actually need one, one circle to find this uh, failure envelope. The equation for this failure envelope is actually shown here. And this failure envelope is tangent to the more circle at failure. And one thing I want to point out on this figure here is this inclination of your failure plane. So this theta is inclination of failure plane. If you look at this relationship here, theta is again the inclination of the failure plane and phi prime is the friction angle. So you have 45 plus phi over two. The way to get this relationship, I think I showed in previous lecture, two theta is 90 degree plus phi. Just to show how you get this two theta. So this point for a triaxial test, this is actually the pole on the Mohr circle. And if you connect the pole of this Mohr circle to this failure point, And this line here is parallel to your failure plane. And therefore this angle is theta. So that's just the pole method. And we did this exercise actually in example two of this chapter. So that's why I get this two theta equals to 90 degree plus B prime. So that's a failure plane. And then in term of this phi prime, so to get this expression here, this is the purpose of the triaxial test. We want to get this strength parameter phi prime. And to get this, if you look at triangle, let's look at triangle O, O prime and A. So this O, O prime and A. So this is the uh, soil specimen one. And if you look at this triangle here, the sine of phi prime, is O prime A over O prime, or O prime O. 
That's a right triangle there. So this is a 90 degree. O prime A is the radius of your Mohr circle. So that's one over two, sigma one prime minus sigma three prime. And that O prime O, that's the center of the Mohr circle. And that's how you get this equation 12.21. So that's how you get this friction angle from CD triaxial test result. For over-consolidated clay, this failure envelope is slightly different. So there are actually two portions. So this is for OC clay. So for OC clay, there are two portions. Portion AB has a flatter slope. So this slope, the uh, inclination angle is phi one prime. Okay, so this equation here is actually tau f. So this flatter portion AB actually intersect the shear stress axis and the intersection is C prime. So that's that OC portion. And then it has the second portion is the normally consolidated stage. And this is basically that, oh, this is phi one prime, excuse me. So the angle, the inclination angle for that flatter slope is phi one prime. And phi one prime is smaller than phi prime. So you have actually for OC clay, you have these two portions with different slopes. And the second, that normally consolidated slope stage is phi prime times tangent phi prime, sigma prime times tangent phi prime. And for over consolidated clay, these two parameters, phi one prime and C prime, because you have two strength parameters here, you have to use actually two soil specimens to determine this value. So that's what's shown here. So that's equation 12.25 and equation 12.26. That's for these two strength parameters, phi one prime and C prime. And phi one prime is the inclination angle of, of that flatter slope, that OC portion. And C prime is the intersection with the Y axis. In this equation, as I mentioned, you need two specimens. You have actually two sets of principal stresses. And this is actually specimen, specimen number. Okay, so this one here, and this two here. So that in indicates it's specimen one or specimen two. So these are basically two different specimens and you have two sets of principal stresses. And finally, I have some general comments for CD triaxial test. So first of all, CD triaxial test on clay soil can take several days to complete. And the reason being, you have to actually allow the excess pore water pressure to dissipate throughout the process for both stages. And for clays, we know that dissipation pore pressure is very slow. So permeability is very slow. So it can take several days to complete for clay soil. And that's the reason why this CD types of triaxial test is not as common. In the strength parameters you obtain from CD triaxial tests are drained or effective stress strength parameters. So basically what you get out of CD triaxial test is uh, the uh, drained strength parameter. So you have C prime and phi prime. 